Hello Cyberspace, my name is Garrett Mills and welcome to episode 3 in my PHP development series. If you haven't, I encourage you to go back and watch the other videos prior to, in the series prior to this, which you can do by clicking the white eye in the top right hand corner. In this episode, we're going to take a look at building a basic P, uh, form in PHP and it's going to be able to validate the input from that form and it's going to be able to display specific errors based on what the user did wrong and it's going to be able to handle the responses from that form safely and securely. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We want to just make a basic form in PHP. So say we are having a form for our users to sign up for a newsletter. In this case maybe we need um, a first last name and email. So we've got an input tag of type text. The name is first name and it's got a placeholder first name. So generally speaking I don't recommend copy pasting code because it can have some poor effects if you're not careful about what you're doing. But if it's just little things and you're super careful about where you're pasting it and whatnot, it can be a bit of a time saver. So to kind of make this look a little nicer, I'm gonna put some spacing on either side of these. Ideally in a production web app, you would have um, some nice CSS and a template that you're using. PHP is designed to be used in complement with normal templates and whatnot. And so then of course we're going to have input of type submit. So now um, this we have three fields, a first name, a last name, and email. They've got some placeholder text telling us what they are and a submit button. So if we jump over to Firefox, we can take a look at this page and you see we've got this nice simple little form uh, laid out here. So next we need to deal with where HTML is going to send the responses the form to. So this is the forms action. Uh, we want to have this dynamically done and we want to tell PHP to send it to the page we are on. Now this can be done by using the variable uh, PHP self from the server superglobal. So the server superglobal has a variable called PHP self, which points to this page. And then always, 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 when you're directly exporting URL-based variables into your page, you want to encase it in an HTML special characters uh, sanitizer so that it removes any characters that HTML is specific to, like, um, that HTML is specific to like forward slashes, backslashes, uh, greater than, less than signs, etc. so that um, hackers and others with malicious intent can't inject scripting code into your page. So what this is going to do is it's going to go to the server super global and grab the PHP self variable. And what this variable is, is it's just this last bit of the URL after the um, after the address of the server. So what this variable is going to be is it's going to essentially type in this. And so inside this action, you're, there's going to be this address. So that no matter if I change the name of this page or whatnot, this PHP will automatically update with whatever the current URL is. So we don't have to worry about making sure this is changed. And so then, we also want to make sure that it's using the post method to send this. Now I talked a little bit about this briefly in an earlier episode, but a post method is generally used for form data when an application um, on the client side is sending data to the server. It sends it in the form of a post request, and this post request contains variables in the HTML, or in the request header that PHP um, sorts into its own super globals that allows us to access these and so we can filter between how we're going to handle a get request and a post request for the same page which cleans up our code a lot. 
So for just a normal get request, like um, entering the URL in the browser and hitting enter, we're just gonna display this form. But when they hit submit, it's going to send a post request. And so we wanna handle that differently. So we're gonna have a little bit of PHP up here to handle that. So we want to check if the request method is post. So we need to have a gate if the request method is stored in the server variable request method equals post. So if the form is submitted in a post request, then we want to handle it in here. Now, inside here, we need to do a couple of things. The first thing you always want to do with form input is you want to sanitize it like we did this. Um, sanitize it to make sure that nobody can inject malicious code onto your server or anything that's just going to mess with or make your application behave in a way that is not intended. So since we're going to have to sanitize this, sanitize multiple things over and over again, uh, we want to define it in a function. So in PHP we define functions with the function keyword. So function sanitize takes input string and then we're going to do two different things to it. The first is we want to run it through this HTML special characters function, which is going to remove all of the greater than, less than, etc. And then we want to strip the slashes from it, from it. Because for our purposes, especially for a newsletter sign up form, there's no reason for any of the input, a first name, a last name, or an email to have a slash in it. And PHP um, if you're not careful about where you put slashes in your strings, it can mess up things like redirect URLs and whatnot if PHP mistakes a slash for a folder delineator or whatnot. And then we just want to return the string. So this is going to take an input, clean it up, and spit it back out. So next we want to get the data and actually sanitize it. So we're going to have a first name a last name and an email. So we want to define each of these. So for the first name, obviously we're going to run this through our sanitize function, but where do we get this data from? Well, if you remember earlier in our earlier tutorials, we accessed the variables from a git request using the git super global. It's the same thing for post requests, just with the post super global. So the post super global, we're looking for the field first name. How do I know that's what it's called? Because we defined it here. The field name is first name. So this is going to sanitize the first name variable from the post request and assign it to this variable. And we just want to do the same thing for these other two. Sanitize post last name. And then of course sanitize post email. So that cleans up and gets rid of any characters that could mess with the server, but we still need to do what's called validation. Validation is essentially where um, you have specific code that checks each field individually to make sure that the responses in that field conform to what you're looking for. So for example, our first and last name fields. These, we want them to be alphanumeric, which means they've only got letters and numbers in them, because there's no reason a name realistically should have a special character in it. And so if it does have a special character in it, uh, we don't want to accept that as input, we want to return an error. And then for our email, we want to run it through a filter to check if it is in fact a valid email address. And if someone has inputted something that's not a valid email address, well, we want that to error out also. So we're gonna have a set of logic that's going to um, check for errors and determine whether or not we should actually handle the form input. So to do this, um, to handle errors efficiently, we want to have an array called errors. And what this is going to be essentially is it's going to be an array of error messages for each field. So there'll be a first name key with the first name error message. There'll be a last name key with the last name error message. There'll be an email key with an email error message. And if any field doesn't have an error message assigned to that key, then it means the, um, field didn't have an error. And so then of course inside this if we're going to have a variable just called error 
and this is going to be initially set to false. And then if at any point anything doesn't conform to our validation, error will be set to true. So if anything trips error, then we're not going to accept this input and we're going to write the error message up here. So we want to check each field individually. So first we're going to start with first name. We want to make sure it's alphanumeric. So if it's not alphanumeric and checking if strings are alphanumeric, there is a built-in PHP function called C type alnum and this is just going to take any string and check if it's alphanumeric so in this case first name if first name is not alphanumeric then we want to set error to true we don't want to accept the form input if it's not alphanumeric and then we want to write to the first name error message we want to write an error message so the first name must be alphanumeric. So you can see we've set error to true and we've set the error message specific to this field in this errors array. And because first and last name have the same rule, we can just copy paste that and change the variables. Last name Now for the email address, we have to do something a little different because it uses a different set of standards. We want to use a PHP filter and PHP has a built-in way of validating emails. Um, so we want to use, if it's not going to conform to a variable filter, and in this case, the variable filter is going to look at email and the name of the filter is filter validate email. Now PHP has stored in this constant the rules for a valid email address. And so we are going to check it, the, um, check the email string against those rules. And this is gonna tell us whether or not the email follows those rules. If it doesn't, then we again want to set error to true and then set the error message for the email field to be something that the user will actually see. Please provide a valid email address. And so if any one of these three things does not conform, if any one of these three fields does not conform to the validation rules, it's gonna set error to true, which means this is not going to be acceptable input, which means we're going to return the form with the error messages. But if there's not an error, then we want to handle the form. And since we want to keep our code kind of clean and easy to read and maintain, we want to have our handler defined in a separate function. So function handler, and then we can put the data that we want this to take. So it needs the first name, it needs the last name, and it needs the email address because that's the data that we took. So inside here, uh, eventually we will write some code that will actually handle the input, and this will only get called if all the input is sanitized and it conforms to the thing. So if there's not an error, then we're gonna run handler with first name, last name, and email address. Now we want to work on showing error messages. So if there is an error and this doesn't get called, then PHP is gonna keep going and it's gonna end here and then it's gonna show this form again. So above each of these fields, we can have a space to show an error message. So we just need a little bit of PHP for this. We want to check if the errors, if the field name exists in the errors key. So if errors first name is set, if it is set, then we want to display the error message. If it's not set, then that means that there's no error message for this field, so we don't need to display anything. But here we just want to echo the error message, so errors first name. 
So if there is an error for the first name field, then we're just gonna echo it out. And then we can just repeat this same code for the other fields. Uh, reformatting is fun with copy pasting. That is another reason. So for this field is the last name error. And then for this field is the email error. So if this allows us to warn the user about multiple errors at once. So it's going to check for each of these individual fields if an error message exists. And then if it does, it's going to echo it out. So now that we've got our validation written, we can go ahead and test it out. So say I'm typing and I make a typo in my last name and I accidentally put an exclamation point. So I hit submit query, we're going to get an error message. The last name must be alphanumeric. So say I'm typing and I accidentally mess up my first name this time. I hit submit query, I'm gonna get the error message on my first name. And now say just this time I don't put in a valid email. It's going to tell me that I don't have a valid email address. And the beauty of this is it can correct multiple things at once. So say I just screw everything up, then I'm gonna get error messages for everything. So now that that's all done, we've got the validation written. Now we can write the actual handler. Now there's not a whole lot that we need to do with this right now because we aren't going to look at actually writing records or writing any email handlers or not till a later episode. This episode was almost entirely dedicated toward how to properly set up a form and handle validation for it. But just as an example, say we want to echo like a welcome script for that's going to tell our user thank you. So we're going to have a JavaScript tag and you'll notice something cool that PHP uh, Storm does for me is when you are echoing a script out in PHP, obviously it's going to become HTML. So it automatically does the syntax highlight highlighting for me for HTML. But don't be confused. This is all just a string that I'm echoing. So say we are going to alert. Thank you for signing up for our newsletter. And then we're going to have the name first name. And so what this is going to do is if all of the input is correct, then it's going to handle this action. So say I enter everything correct this time. I can hit OK and it passes all the validation. Nothing errors and then there's not an error. So it passes the variables to the handler function where it says thank you for signing up for our newsletter. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in for episode three of my PHP development series on form validation and post requests. Um, as usual, I'll be down in comments. So if you have any comments, concerns, you need help with anything, let me know. I'm happy to help. Or if you just have any cool projects that you want to share with me, I'd love to see what you guys are building with these knowledge. Um, or if you've just got any kind of code, questions, comments you just want to share with me. i definitely love to see it. And um, be sure to get subscribed. There's more of these videos coming. I'm looking to start another new series. So just get subscribed to tune in so you don't miss out on anything. And as always, thanks for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one.